Hi, I'm Emily from Life So Savory, and today I'm going to show you how to do a couple modified pattern hacks to adjust the neckline on some patterns. So I've done a couple really, what I think are really fun pattern options here, including this neckline that has a zipper, so you can adjust it if you want. And then this neckline, which has snaps, and you can open and close the neckline for a couple of different looks, depending on what you're going for. So we're going to uh, make both of those patterns today, or both of these projects, and we're gonna get started with the zipper neckline first. So I guess before I do the zipper one, I'll just show you really quickly how I modified the necklines to achieve this look. So for the snaps, you'll need snap tape and fabric, and I think any pattern that has sort of a drop shoulder boat neck look can be modified for this project. So I'm using um, this slouchy sweatshirt pattern and for the back, you can see how I just took off the sharp corner of the neckline here and just kind of smoothed it out for the snap tape. And then for the front of the neckline, I just cut it a little bit lower. I didn't really cut from this shape that you would normally, but I did just kind of make a sloped um, angle on there, and you just don't want any sharp corners for your, um, for the snap tape. So kind of gradual curves. For the zipper neckline, I took this tank, it's made out of woven fabric, and it just had a regular scoop neck, and what I did is I just sort of folded it over to make it a straight V, and we can sew our zipper onto that straight line there. So from there, once you've modified your patterns, we can begin with putting the zipper in. So because this is woven fabric and we're actually not gonna finish the neckline due to just sewing the zipper on top, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this on the serger to prevent any fraying and um, deterioration of the fabric. So we'll go ahead and start with that over at the serger. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just surge down both sides of this V neckline to finish the fabric. This will prevent it from fraying and give stability for us to sew the zipper on top. Now because it's a V, I have to start and finish both sides individually. So you can see right when I get down here to the V, I'm just gonna fold this fabric over and sew off the side. And then we'll do the other side just the same. Okay, so we just wanna keep the fabric out of the way, but we wanna sew as much of it as we can. And if you feel like you haven't caught all the threads in your serger seam, you're gonna wanna go ahead and like zigzag or finish with the sewing machine this part of the V to prevent fraying. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and place our zipper onto the pattern. And you'll finish the top edge of this when you do the back. And usually you put like a binding on the back of the fabric or whatever it is. And then the top of the zipper gets caught in the shoulder seam. So for this instance, we're not gonna worry about the top of the zipper. And we're going to just place the zipper maybe one inch below the bottom of where we finish the fabric and pin in place. I'll do one side of the zipper and then I'll come back and pin and sew the other because it's really um, too hard to do both at the same time. So we wanna just lay the zipper along the edge of the fabric and you don't wanna see the fabric. We wanna have the zipper teeth hanging over. A decorative zipper like this one or that metal one that I have on the other one work great for this project because it is an exposed zipper and we're not hiding the edges. It doesn't really matter how long your zipper is because we can always trim that to fit. So I'm not gonna cut it all the way off, but I am gonna just trim a little bit of that excess off so I don't have to deal with the bulk. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that down to secure it to the edge of the shirt and then we would come back and do the other side as well. All right, so I'm using a zipper foot to keep the presser foot out of the way of my zipper. And do make sure that you top stitch 
when you're getting started. And we're just gonna sew directly on top of the zipper, catching the layer of fabric and catching the zipper as we sew. Now because the bottom of my zipper wasn't really finished, I folded it under to give it a little bit more of a finished look. So depending on what zipper you're using may depend on how you finish the bottom edge of the zipper. And you're going to have to get the zipper, the pull tab out of the way to sew all the way down to the bottom. Let's see if I can pull it here. Okay, and then you'll sew down and back stitch to secure. Okay, and there we have one side of our V zipper neckline finished, and you would just repeat on the other side and then complete your pattern as directed. Now, let's take a look at the snap neckline. So you will do these two sides of the neckline in mirror. I'm gonna do the front with the tape exposed. So it's actually gonna be the opposite of what I did on the one that we have up there. So to start, I will sew our snap tape on the back side of the shirt, and then we'll flip it and top stitch it to the front. So what I wanna do is give room to sew the shoulders in, so I make sure that I clip that first snap off so that I have room here to sew, and then when we put this sh the arms in, we'll have room to sew on the snap tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, stitch this along the top edge, and I like to keep my zipper tape or my zipper foot still in place. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is just overlap the snap tape on the fabric on the wrong side, about a half inch or so. And this is kind of one of those projects where I just sort of stop and go and adjust as needed. Hopefully your zipper foot is able to pass over your snaps without distorting the project. All right, when you get to the end, then you're going to remove it, and to finish this part of the project, you're going to flip the snap tape over, and we're gonna top stitch it to the right side of the shirt that you are making. So we're going to sew one more time on the other side of the snap tape, now with the snap tape, tape flipped to the right side of the shirt. And when you do the back of the shirt, this is the front, you would do these steps in mirror. So you would first sew the snap tape to the front of the shirt and then you would flip it to the back. And this gives you an overlapping shoulder seam like is seen on my example shirt. So the way that I know my snaps will match up is because on this snap tape, I trimmed off that first snap and I started with the space in between the snaps. I'll do the same thing on the back side of the shirt, which will then give the same distance between the snaps on both the front and the back of the shirt. So I think as long as you accommodate and you use that tip to start by the, trimming that, then you won't have any trouble with the snap tape matching up. So you can see a little bit, I'm running into the zipper foot, running into the snaps. So you just have to make sure that you're paying attention and being aware if it does get caught up. 
right, so there's the front of the neckline of the shirt, and you can see how then the back of the shirt would overlap to the front and snap, and you can either snap it up tight, or you can do a one off the shoulder, or whatever sort of look you're going for. And then with both of these projects, the zipper and the snaps, first I do the neckline, and then I proceed to finish the pattern as directed, including this, the arms or the bindings or whatever else the pattern might call for. So I hope these two hacks inspire you to be creative with some of your patterns and just add some different necklines to projects that you're working on.